there are other uh, teachings of the Buddha which are uh, more of the on the spiritual path. Uh. Before I come to that, uh, I will talk more about this universe. Uh. You know, the the Buddha, uh, even you know, two thousand five hundred years ago, uh, they had not made radio telescopes. <laughs> Nowadays, you have radio telescopes in America that can see so far away. But the Buddha had a more powerful telescope inside him. <laughs> and the Buddha talked about expanding world systems and contracting world systems that even scientists don't know yet. So what is this expanding and contracting world system? Firstly, the Buddha talked about a small thousand-fold world system. Then he talked about middling thousand, thousand-fold world system. Then he talked about great thousand, thousand, thousand-fold world system. So what is this? The Buddha said one world system uh, consists of one sun. If you look into the sky at night, uh, you find a lot of stars. Every star is a sun. Hmm? So every star uh, is a world system. And in, in every world system, uh, you can expect to find human beings. So every, 1,000 of these stars uh, makes up a small thousand-fold world system. What scientists nowadays call the uh, galaxy, right? Uh, now, in other Buddhist books, uh, they talk about chakrawala. This thousand-fold world system they call chakrawala. What is a chakra? A disc, right? Uh, so you see, so long ago, uh, they already know that the galaxy is a disc. Uh, now only scientists uh, understand uh, that the galaxy uh, is flat like a disc. So what the Buddha was trying to say, that 1,000 of these uh, forms 1,004 small world system. Then 1,000 of these uh, for, forms the middling 1,000, 1,004 world system. And then another 1,000 of these uh, form the great 1,000, 1,000, 1,004 world system. And the Buddha said, uh, the uh, uh, time uh, has no beginning and time has no end. And now Professor Stephen Hawking uh, also verifies. Yeah? Professor Stephen Hawking, by his calculation, now he has verified what the Buddha said. And the Buddha also said in the suttas, the discourses, uh, that space is boundless. You cannot find the limits of space. And Professor Stephen Hawking also verified what the Buddha said. But one other thing he has not verified, what the Buddha said. The Buddha said uh, that our consciousness, we can cultivate our consciousness eh, until eh, it becomes boundless. You see, every living being, eh, our consciousness eh, goes to a certain extent. You know. For example, you, you think about a line of ants, a line of ants walking. Eh, huh? So you stand there and you look at the line of ants. Where are these ants going to? Remember? So can the ants look up and look at you? Can, can they see you? Cannot. Why? Because their consciousness is limited to such a small, huh? they can't see us. So in the same way, our consciousness is not very big also. Huh? We can see only to a certain limit. So maybe some deva, some heavenly, heavenly being up there is looking down at us. And we look up, we cannot see him. <laughs> yeah? And just like the ant. <laughs> So the Buddha said, if you cultivate your consciousness through meditation, you can expand your consciousness. Uh, it can become boundless. Uh, so now, this thousandfold uh, world system, uh, the Buddha says, uh, expands and contracts. What he means by that uh, is that these stars, uh, they, they go further and further away from each other and then they go up to a certain limit, uh, then they come closer and closer to each other. So now what the scientists have found out uh, is that they see the stars in our galaxy uh, are expanding, going away from each other. But they start scratching their heads. Is these stars going to expand forever? They don't know. Eh? <laughs> they don't know. But the Buddha knew uh, that 
they will expand up to a certain limit. Nah. After that, they will contract. So, when they contract, what happens? They will keep on contracting and contracting and contracting nah, until the Buddha said one day, yeah, you see, now we see one sun. Yeah? There's one sun, this few days of this so hot, tak boleh tahan. Yeah? <laughs> so, after a long time, the Buddha says, yeah, you will see another sun come. Abyss, ah. <laughs> the sun coming. One sun that will tahan already, and the sun coming into our 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 world. So when the second sun comes, ah, why why does the second sun come? Because the stars are contracting. They are coming closer and closer and closer to each other. So when the second sun comes near us, ah, ah, then the plants will die, human beings will die, all the animals will die. Ah. Then after a long time, because the stars uh, keep on contracting, uh, the third sun will come. And then the small rivers will dry up, small ponds will dry up. Then after that, the fourth sun, the fifth, the sixth, until seven suns. And seven suns are uh, around us, uh, and then the world will burn, will burn. And they all come together. All these stars come together uh, and they burn and burn and burn and then they form one one mass uh, and this mass is a very big solid heavy mass and scientists nowadays they have discovered this you know what they call it a black hole <laughs> black hole uh, is a solid mass in space uh, which is so big and so solid uh, that anything flying near to that, that black hole gets sucked inside. Actually, this black hole is emitting light, emitting a lot of light. But because it's, it is so huge, huh? its magnetic pull is so strong, huh? the light, what they call the photons, huh? the light uh, particles, huh? go out and get sucked back. Go out and get sucked back. So you can't see. Huh? You can't see. So you, it appears like dark. But actually, it's not dark. No? Mm-hmm. So it keeps sucking things like anything flying by, it gets sucked in. Then after a long time, what happens? Big bang. Boom. Pao cha. <laughs> ah. Then it gets scattered all over the place. Yeah. Mm. Then after a long time, they circle and circle, circle, and then the stars form again. Yeah. Ah. Stars form again. So this happens from the beginning of time uh, to the end, eternity, it never ends. Uh. So this is uh, natural uh, laws of nature. You know, if you study the Tao Te Ching, uh, it says, uh, the Tao that can be described is not the eternal Tao. So the Tao uh, is actually also God. It's a force, a being. Uh. It's not a being, it's a force uh, that governs the world. And the Tao Te Ching says that from the Tao, uh, the millions and millions of things are created. Mm -hmm. So they just call it the Tao, they don't call it God. But actually it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, so now you understand how the world, our world is going to end. In the Bible, uh, it says it's going to end by fire, but I never explained very well. But the Buddha explained very well, uh, very scientifically uh, explained. Mm. 